Hey guys, welcome back to Nexus Core. I'm Richard, and today I'm going to be showing you my Royal Paladin standard deck profile. Uh, starting off with our starter, which is uh, Glime or Glimey. Uh, skill is when wrote upon draw, just like all the other starters, and comes in the trial deck, so you're going to be running that. Going into our grade threes, I run four copies of King of Knights Alfred. Highly recommend this card as a four of. Great card. Gives you an additional rear guard uh, with its first skill, which is once per turn, kind of blast one, search your deck for up to one blaster blade and call it to rear. Uh, blaster blade gains 5,000 for the turn and then you shuffle your deck. And then the other skill is continuous during your turn if you have blaster blade and your rear guard circle, uh, this unit gets 10,000 power. So it swings for 23 on its own. Uh, the blaster blade gains 5k for the turn, so helping your columns get bigger. And overall, uh, just helping you fill the field and take advantage of the force markers you're going to be putting on your rear guards. Really good. Uh, helps you s continuously riding this card over and over. Uh, helps you build soul for soul saver. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So this card is definite for a really good card. Uh, next up for the grade 3 lineup. Mine's a little weird. Uh, I decided to run 3 soul saver dragon uh, instead of running the 4. Uh, there's nothing wrong with running four Soul Saver. This is just a personal preference. My eighth grade three is going to be one copy Alfred early. Uh, my reasoning for doing this is because I just wanted a little more diversity rather than just sticking to writing Soul Saver as an alternative continuously. Having the one copy Alfred early keeps, I guess, a little more interesting for me. It's just a personal preference. Uh, I'll just start by reading off uh, the skills and then we'll go into the details of it. A little more. So the skill of Soul Saver Dragon is Soul Blast 5 Act. Six of your units gain 15,000 power until the end of the turn. So that's basically going to be your, your win condition for the game. It's going to be having those columns gaining 30k and then swinging for like 70 to 60k numbers. Uh, the other skill is Auto. When this attacks, you may Soul Charge 1. So if you ride it, you on attack, you can help build up your soul to help you. Uh, Build up for the other skill to help you win for game. Skill of Alfred early is when placed on Vanguard Circle, you counter blast one. Choose up to one Blaster Blade from your hand or soul and call it to rear. Blaster Blade gains 10,000 power for the end of the turn. And if you call Blaster Blade, you get to draw one card. So my reasoning is basically if I do ride Blaster Blade, which will be pretty often, uh, it gives me an additional uh, source of um, rear guards being that because uh, King of Knights Alfred calls Blaster Blades from the deck, um, if I run out of Blaster Blades in the deck, I still have um, Alfred early for the skill to ride, and I can call it either from my hand, if it's in my hand and not in my deck, or uh, from the soul, if it's still in my soul. So this lets me pull out more rear guards for additional attacks, and giving the Blaster Blade 10,000 power helps, and the fact that you get the draw a card is just more bonuses that I really like with the card. So while Soul Saver is the finisher, um, I do see it enough where I feel comfortable at three, and then the one Alfred early is just uh, to see more Blaster Blades and get more rear guards. Uh, if you prefer to run full soul, four Soul Saver, that's perfectly fine too. You can do that as well. So uh, running four of uh, the guy himself, Blaster Blade. Uh, he's your main target for all your Alfred cards and uh, Phase is going to be a card that's going to be on your field for most of the game. Skill Blaster Blade is Vanguard Circle. If you have four or more rear guards, this gets plus one crit. Skill's kind of iffy, but uh, if you feel like you can get it off without losing too much of your hand, it's there. The other skill is Van or Rear Guard Circle. When this is placed, uh, Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards in the front row and retire it. So we have a uh, little bit of retiring capability in this deck, which is nice helps get rid of uh, interceptors so your opponent can't guard with those 5k shields. And uh, while it does count a counter blast and a soul blast, uh, those are uh, resources that we don't have a plentiful amount of, especially counter blast. So you have to be a little mindful when you decide to use that skill. Other than that, the card is uh, a death four of for this deck. Next up, we are running Four copies of High Dog Breeder Akane. Uh, this card is great. Um, 
I highly recommend if you're starting out to build this deck and you're kind of budgeting your deck, you don't want to splurge too much money, uh, you should definitely get four copies of this card as it's really helpful with the deck's consistency. So High Dog Breeder Akane's skill is uh, when placed, counterblast one, search your deck for one Pongle, uh, for up to one Pongle, call it to rear guard circle and shuffle your deck. So uh, the card helps you get a plus one by counterblasting one. You search the deck for Pongle and you can call it to any rear guard circle. It's really nice, helping you fill the field from your deck, thinning out your deck for triggers. And then the other skill is Van or Rearguard Circle. During the battle, this is boosted by a High Beast. This gets 3,000 power. So not only does Akane uh, help you fill your field, uh, she can help make your columns slightly bigger, help you push for numbers, etc. So what I love about this card is that it works on Van and Rear for both of its skill. So if you do ride it instead of Blaster Blade, uh, you can still get the Pongle out and start filling your field right from the get-go. I love this card so much. You, if you're planning to build this deck, you should definitely be running four copies of High Dog Reader Akane. Next up, I decided to run 12 grade twos. Um, personal preference again. Uh, my choice is Sage of the Arts Jaren. Uh, the skill is pretty simple. It's uh, when it's on rear guard circle, when this attacks a vanguard, if you have three or more rear guards, this gets 5,000 power. So, uh, so I've talked about this before in the trial deck video for the IG Sendo trial deck when I was unboxing it, that combining this with 8k boosters swings for 23k numbers, which hits force and obviously excel and protect numbers, uh, vanguard numbers, so your opponent has to drop more against these columns. Combine this with force uh, rearguard markers, this swings for 25 on its own. Uh, pretty simple, but can make a big difference when it comes to the amount that your opponent has to guard for. You can drop this down to 3 uh, because I'm running 13 grade 1s uh, instead of 14. So if you feel that uh, 3 jarring is a little more consistent for you, that's fine. Uh, I'm running 4 right now. I might change it later, but for now this is the, the build that I've been running with. So next up, I run 4 copies of Little Sage Marin. Little Sage Marin is a great card. Uh, this is your draw engine for the most part. The skill of Little Sage Marin is uh, auto rear once per turn. Uh, when your opponent, your opponent, sorry, when your other rear guard is placed in the same column as this unit, you counter blast one, draw a card, and Marin gains 3,000 power for the turn. So you can use the skill over and over again, unlike Allen, which is when you place it, you uh, counter blast one, call a card from your hand. If you do, draw, and Allen gains 3k. So Marin is really great. You put it in one of your uh, left or right columns. Every time you call something in front of it, uh, you get to you can counterblast one, draw a card, give itself 3k to help push for numbers. Um, kind of reason why I'm running 12 grade twos because if I'm going to be intercepting a lot, I can make room for Marin, uh, and then I can make big columns. Uh, you do run out of counterblast a lot in this deck, so you have to be a little thoughtful of how often you want to use this skill. But other than that, I do want to see the card a lot. Uh, because hand is really important in standard format. So being able to draw a bunch of cards uh, helps the deck a lot. Next, because we are running four copies of High Dog Green or Akane, we have to run four copies of Pongle. Pongle is a really great card too, since we're going for the Soul Saver turn as our kill. Pongle's skill is when it's placed on rear guard's circle, if you have another unit in the same column as this unit, you may soul, you soul charge one. If the card soul charged is a trigger unit, this gets 5,000 power. So that that's really nice because it makes up for the losing a trigger in your deck, but in re return you get that extra power bonus for the turn. Uh, soul is obviously there to help fill up the soul saver really quickly. Uh, we're also running it mostly because it is a call target to thin out the deck for Kane. You definitely want to be running four Kane and four Pongol if you're going to be playing Royal Paladin Standard, just so that you can fill your field a lot faster and uh, thin out your deck for triggers. Uh, next up, I am running three copies of Knight of Rose Morgana. Um, this is one of those options that I was taught uh, that I mentioned earlier. If you don't want to be running three Jaren, you could up uh, Morgana to four. Morgana is a really great card, and recently in a tournament that I entered, Morgana uh, was really helpful because I ended up playing against three Oracle Think Tank decks, 
and Morgana has at least some push against uh, Excel and Protect decks. So Morgana's skill is uh, when it attacks a Vanguard, you Soul Blast 1. This unit gets 3,000 power to the end of the battle for each grade of your Vanguard. And it says in parentheses right there, plus 9,000 if grade 3, so to give you an example. So uh, combining the 8 plus the 9, this by itself swings for 17, uh, which obviously hits the 12k base grade 3s of Excel and Protect uh, clans. So combine this with Force Marker, this swings for 27 by itself. Really good, really helpful. Uh, it does cost a Soul Blast, which you do need for Soul Saver Dragon, but because uh, Soul Saver Dragon also, if you're sitting on, on your Vanguard, Soul Charges when it attacks, you're essentially getting the cost you need to pay for Morgana's skill. You also have cards like Pongol to help fill the, the soul for the skill. You're constantly rewriting your grade 3s over and over again to acquire gifts. Soul is not that big of an issue in the deck, so you can use this card's cost pretty frequently. Uh, if you do want to drop Jaren, you can up this to 4. Really great card, good for attacking. I just decided to stick with Jaren because uh, Jaren is free and Morgana does cost a Soul Blast, but um, that's I'm just playing around with that for now. And that's the build that I this is the build that I entered with at the tournament. Uh, I guess I'll just say that at the tournament I did get second place, so not saying a lot, but it was uh, I tied for second place. Shouldn't shouldn't brag about that I like, secured second by myself. Uh, Lion Main Stallion. Uh, I decided to run this because it is a 10k booster essentially. It is also a high beast. Uh, the skill is. If you have four more rear guards, this gets plus 3k when it's on rear. So this is really nice because uh, it can be a booster, and if you boost like an 8k uh, rear guard like Kongo, it's an 18k column, which hits force numbers. Um, when you boost this with the Kane, the column becomes 23, also hitting force numbers. So this card is pretty helpful. I really like the card a lot. And um, you, you could also up this to three if you want to take out Jaren. So there's a lot of thought of mismatching and switching that you can do. I decided to go with this for my build. Uh, triggers. Uh, triggers are pretty standard. No pun intended. Um, you got eight crits for uh, Flogel and for Epona. Uh, these are the ones that came in the trial deck, so you're definitely going to have these if you buy a trial deck. Um, these are the only critical triggers we can really be running. Next up, we are running four copies of Flash Shield Esult, which is our Perfect Guard draw trigger. I love the fact that Perfect Guards are draw triggers now. It's just amazing. It allows you to fill your grade one lineup with better, more useful cards instead of feeling forced to fill it up with Perfect Guards because it's mandatory. And also the fact that draw triggers are mostly vanilla, especially since the other ones we have now are vanilla anyways. Really nice to have triggers with skills. So for those who don't know what perfect guards are, uh, the skill is guard circle. When this is placed, discard a card from your hand and one of your units cannot be hit until the end of that battle. So you nullify the attack by discarding one card from your hand when this is placed on guard circle. And it's a trigger, great card. Definitely run four of it. If you are just starting on building your deck, uh, I highly recommend get these first because this allows you to have more room in your grade one lineup for other cards. Um, so Definitely get these PGs as soon as possible. Highly recommend it. Lastly, um, four copies of our heal trigger. I just don't mean in the lane. Heal triggers are nice because they have that uh, 20k shield instead of the 15, like the other triggers. And it's a heal trigger, so you definitely want to be running four heals. And the skill is, you know, you can only run four heal triggers in a deck. Uh, that was basically it. These are the force markers that I have. They're all vanilla and the one blaster blade which came in the trial deck. I don't have my Aichi Sig in this deck um, just because um, I just chose not to put it in. It's my personal preference. Um, I just have eight force markers just because I run eight grade threes. I don't go into every single one. The max I think I've gone into for a game was five force markers. Um, but yeah, they're pretty nice. I'm liking, I'm liking standard. So that's pretty much it, you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you thought about this video. Uh, let me know what you think of my deck list. Um, I'm always willing, always wanting to see feedback from people and 
see what their deck lists were like. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm Richard, and I'll see you all next time.